Hello and welcome to Talk Game Builder. In this tutorial we'll tell you everything you need to know on how to build your very own 2D games. In this tutorial we will cover loading animated static and scrolling sprites into the background, creating objects, backgrounds and sprites, and the basic edit functions to change these objects, backgrounds and sprites. First things first, we need to open Talk Game Builder, so open it up and create a new project. Call it something you will remember. Make sure that no game templates are displayed in the location of the game. It's somewhere easily accessible. Now that we have Talk Game Builder up and running, we need to load the objects into the game. Click on the Project tab at the top of the menu, then Resources. This loads up a list of all the available objects we can import into the game. For this tutorial we're going to use the default Talk Game Builder Fish Art. If you wish to load your own art into the game, click on the Create Image Map, find your image and load it into the Static Sprite Create menu. As you can see, Talk Game Builder has loaded all the objects into our Create menu. Static Sprites. These are the background objects that you can put into the game. Then we have Animated Sprites. These are the moving characters in-game. Scrollers. These are background images that show movement in-game. Particle effects. These are animated objects effects like smoke and fire. Tile maps. This creates the ground objects that your character jumps on in game. They are used to create collision detection. 3D shapes. In this section you may load in 3D models and convert it into a 2D view. The other menu is for editing anything that is created. To create an object, you simply drag and drop. You can now begin to form the design of your game. The next step is to arrange the layers to give an effect of depth into your game. This is done in the edit menu of each object. Click on the object you want to edit. Make sure you're on the edit tab. Then find the layers tab. Talk Game Builders can support up to 32 layers in one scene, ranging from 0 to 31. 0 being the closest to the screen and 31 being the furthest away. As you can see, we can change the layers to show depth onto the scene. We've also resized the object to the square on the screen. This is the viewport that the player sees. Now that we have a background for our game, we need to start loading some sprites in. So again, simply drag and drop from the create menu. We now have fish swimming in our level. You can also see several new buttons appear above the object. The first is collision polygons. This is to edit the sprite's physical boundaries. We can change them to wrap around any object we wish. The next is link points. This is used to set a link point on the sprite for other objects to be attached to it. We will give a fish a buddy who swims behind him. Again, use a drag and drop function to place a new sprite onto the screen. Notice how the sprite doesn't go to the link point we just set. You need to click the mount button on the new sprite to do so. The edit sort button is used to overlap images. This button is the edit image map button, used to modify animated sprites. We can increase or decrease the frame rate to change our fish's speed. We can also change the cell count if we have more images per animation. We can change its background colour and smooth up animation to hide any pixelization from the original image. Earlier we talked about loading your own images into the Tor Game Builder using the Create Image Map menu. We can also edit our static sprites and turn them into animated sprites. Double click on the static sprite. This will bring up a new edit menu. We can now edit the frames to become an animated sprite. As you can see, our static sprite has now become an animated one. Now we're going to run over the more advanced edit functions of Tor Game Builder. The first menu is the camera menu. This edits the viewport around our scene. We can change the position, the size and resolution that the player sees during gameplay. The scene graph scripting menu allows you to add programming codes to the camera, so you can move it as you wish. An example of this would be if you wanted the camera to follow the player as they move through the environment. The layer management menu allows you to sort through the layers you assign to objects. You can make them visible or invisible depending on what you want to do with the scene. The Debug Rendering menu allows you to see things like collision boundaries around objects, objects linked to other objects, and the collision an object makes during gameplay. This is used to fine tune your game and solve any problems you may have during the creation of your game. The next menu are Dynamic Fields. 
that is used to set speed values to objects and cameras in the game. When you click on an actual sprite in the scene, the edit menu changes and a new set of functions appear. The behavior menu allows you to have a predetermined script that can be applied to any sprite you wish. This is useful when you have many sprites to load into a scene. The next menu is a screen object selection that edits the position, layer and direction of the fish, as well as visibility and the time on the screen. The align menu is used to correctly position the camera to the selected object. The next menu is quite important, it assigns code to objects so they move and do exactly what you want during gameplay. We can also assign pre-coded data blocks to multiple objects, much like the behaviour tab. This is the collision menu. It allows you to create basic contact functions for every object in the game. It is used to correctly determine what objects interact with each other and what happens when they do. The physics menu gives your object weight, movement and gravity in game. The mount object menu is used to set an object's rotation and its spin value. The world limits menu is to set what happens to an object when it comes in contact with its own world limits. The blending menu is to change an object's brightness, contrast and colour. The dynamic field is the same as before. And finally the scroller menu tab. This changes our background speed, position and how many times it appears on the screen. And that concludes our tour game building tutorial. You now have a basic knowledge to load, create and edit objects in Tour Game Builder. Thank you for listening and get creating.